died upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Our Father, I pray now that thou would take us. I am aware the hour is late, children are restless, the flesh is tired, and God's minds will wonder. People will be drawn up to the miles they've got to drive. To the days uh, tomorrow that they'll have to hasten home. And Lord, they're, they're getting weary now. And so I pray, Holy Ghost of God, that Thou would arrest their thinking for a few more minutes. Lord, I know they've heard lots of great preaching. I know, Lord, that they've been uh, thrilled and filled and feasted from the things of God. And I know I'm unworthy. I know I'm little. But, oh, God, God, touch me again. Touch me again. Help these men of God. Oh, such great men. Lord, I, I looked at these men. Here stood uh, Brother Reno, hair white and years of experience, degrees and Oh, a man of such great ability through the Lord. No, Brother Joe Carson. These great men. And then I thought, Lord, who am I? And then you told me. You're the one I called November the 23rd, 1943, in an army camp in Texas, upstairs, on the second bunk on the left. There's where you were sitting when I called you. And Lord, so I... Thank you for my calling. Paul said he's put me into the ministry. Thank you for that privilege. Now, Lord, if there's any preaching done, you'll do it. And any results, any results, God, you'll get the glory. For it's in your name I make this prayer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Paul makes a statement in verse 12 that I think bears some time and some attention that we need to bear that we need to pay to it. Paul makes a statement and he said, At least I should hinder the gospel of Christ. At least I should hinder the gospel of Christ. He said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, Paul felt that he had been put in trust with the gospel of Christ. I believe that every born-again person that loves God certainly should feel that they've been in, put in trust with something to do for the Lord Jesus. But I believe every man of God that's been saved and called into the ministry, into the working of God, has been put in trust with one of the most precious commodities that we have in the world today, and that is the gospel. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5, but our gospel, our gospel came not in word only, but also in power. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 11, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. Then Paul declares in Romans 1 and verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now Paul said, I've been put in trust 
with that blessed, precious, wonderful, heavenly commodity. Now I say to you, my friend, without hesitation, that God has not chosen personality to save man. God has not chosen a well-mannered and smooth speech, nor has He chose any of man's ability, but He's made one great choice to get men to God, and that is through the preaching of the Word of God. Now, I don't care what you may say. I don't care what you may think. My friend, I don't care how you say what I'm doing is working out down there. But, Brother Jeremy, there's no ifs and ands about it. The gospel preached in power by a man that's been put in the ministry is what God's going to use to get the job done with today. I don't know, my friend, what you may think about it about these modern ways and ideas. But I want to tell you one thing, without any hesitation and biting my tongue, I still think it's going to be old-fashioned, Holy Ghost anointed preaching that God Almighty is going to use to bring men to the saving grace of Almighty God. Now notice here what Paul said, I drop what the hindry. He made no statement about stopping it. He made no statement about stopping it. He never said, now least I should stop the gospel. I want to go on record as saying, dear one, you may hinder it here, and you may detain it here for a while. But when you've hindered it, it'll break out somewhere else. Yes, sir. If you notice Brother Reno's message, a God sent persecution among those people. And the Bible said they went everywhere preaching the gospel of Christ. The gospel was spread across our land and country. I'm amazed. He said was talking about division. Sometimes you I'll be driving down the road and here sets a church upon the side of the hill. And I'm just uh, getting a name out of there. I'm not having reference to anybody's church, though your church may be named this, and you will see a side church that said Old Mount Zion. Drive down the road just about a mile and a half and it said New Mount Zion. Amen. Somebody said what's happening? Sometimes uh, God Almighty brings uh, a scattering among the flock of God uh, that they might carry the word of God elsewhere. Uh, I know I want to I wanna share something with you, and I hope it'll show you what I'm talking about in some detail. Last November past, Brother Sammy and I told about his dad standing back by. And Sammy, let me tell you this. Every once in a while, go to him and put your arm around him. And have overalls on him and, and hug that little fella up close to you. And put a kiss on his cheek and say, Daddy, I love you. Sammy, don't you fail to do that. You hear me? Don't you fail to do that. When you said, I want my dad to stand, I just to give anything in the world, Brother David, if I could just saw my dad stand tonight. But he's gone on home to heaven now. Now. But last November past, uh, a year ago rather, uh, my dad, bless his old precious heart, had had cancer and uh, emphysema, well you name it, he had it, uh, bad kidneys and so on and so forth. We took him to the hospital and the doctor said, now, we've done all we can now. Take your daddy home and do for him what you can. And said, when he gets uh, to where you can't uh, see to his need, said, just uh, get an ambulance and bring him back over, and we'll, we'll see to him until the end. So my brother Bobby that's here tonight, my brother Wendell and others, we came and set up with him, take it not about, and friends came in. And eventually that hour came that we could not see to dad's need anymore. So we called a young man, runs out an ambulance service, had a vehicle that cost thousands of dollars, had red lights upon top of it, had a siren on it, and his hands were skilled at the wheel. He came to our home, and we loaded my daddy on a little bed and put him in the ambulance. He said to my brother Bobby and myself, 
Get in the back where you can see about your dad and take care of him that he won't fall off of the bed. And I'll get you to the hospital in a few minutes. I dare say that he was making well over a hundred there for a while. Eventually, I felt that piece of machinery that had cost thousands of dollars begin to slow down. That old cancer eat my daddy upon the inside. He was laying there. His brain had been eat up. And he was rolling that head. I felt that vehicle begin to slow down. I said, Johnny, stop on it. Hurry. He looked back at me with tears in his eyes. He said, Preacher Blue. Ah, they won't get out of my way. They're in my way out there. They won't, they, they won't move. He was blowing that siren, and the lights were flashing. His hands were on the wheel. I'll tell you, a friend of mine, that traffic was hindering him from getting to the hospital. As you know, a lot of times in churches today, why there's people that have got the audacity and the mitigated gall, they'll stand up and say, well, this is the fall, and that's the fall, and if we get rid of this, and if we get rid of that, I'm going to tell you, my friend, it's not always a preacher that you need to change. It may be some member that's hindering the gospel of Christ. Oh, listen to me right now. Oh, you said, now, preacher, Blue, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. What are you talking about? I'm saying to you, my friend, tonight, you may not have cursed the church. You may not have done that, but in your life, in in your slothfulness, in your unconcern, in your inconsistent attitude, in your stealing from God Almighty, you're not going to stop the gospel, but you can hinder the work of God and slow it down and souls are going to hell. I'm a going to, Brother Turner. Amen. Hindering God. You said, now wait a minute, preacher blue. You mean I can hinder? I remember one time we was coming from a service in a bus. And the service was awful cold that night, just awful dead. I don't think I'd ever been in a deader service in my life. A bunch of us young preachers sitting there. And one said, I believe it was this. And the other said, I believe it was that. And if old so-and-so hadn't have done this, or if they'd have let me preach. You know, young preachers, you know. They think, you know, they've got that dime store Bible with a zipper around it, you know. And... And there's not a theological question in the world they can't answer. Amen. And don't you dare ask me how I know. <laughs> but anyway, we said, that's the trouble there now. No one said, that's the trouble over there. And there's an old preacher, wise, full of wisdom. He kind of cleared his throat and got our attention. He said, young men, said, do you want to know where the trouble's at? And we said, oh, we surely do. He said, take your right hand. And we looked at him. He said, I mean it seriously, literally. He said, take your right hand. And so we did. He said, now take a hold of your left wrist. And he said, uh, just feel on up that arm and find out who it's fastened on to. And right there was your problem. Amen. Oh, brother. Amen. So there's your problem. There's what's slowing down. I'm asking you tonight, my friend, are you hindering the gospel of Christ? Are you doing it? Somebody said, now, Brother Blue, how in the name of God can anyone hinder the gospel of Christ? Number one, I believe we hinder it when we don't tell it. Amen? When we just don't tell it. You know, I'm amazed at folks. They can talk about the series. They can talk about basketball, baseball, hockey, skating, golfing. They can talk about politics. They can talk about a gas racing. They can talk about this. They can talk about that. They can talk about the preacher. They can talk about one another. But when it comes to telling about God, folks get shot mouth. Amen. There's an old man lived one time. I lived in Chattanooga. Bless his heart. Gone. He's gone on to heaven now. I guess the old man was a, uh, was accountable for more wrecks on one street in our town than any one man ever lived. He lived on Orchard Knob Avenue, Orchard Knob. And the old man was feeble, very feeble indeed. But every morning, there was a curve right in front of his house, went this way, on Orchard Knob. And he lived right here, in the, right here at the curve. And every morning, just about work time, the old fella, he'd walk up that screen door with that walking stick. And he'd get his balance, he'd finally get it open. He'd take that cane and go out on the porch. An old black felt hat on with the top of it out in Twigger Hair up here. 
<laughs> he get his balance. <clears throat> that traffic will run a curve. He lift his hands up and say, Hallelujah! Never saw like a wreck in my life. Amen. 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 He told it wherever he went. He'd be going down the street in a little bitty step, about two or three inches at a time. They'd get out of his way, him and that white cane. He'd stop right in the middle of the street and begin to sing some old hymn of the church. Amen. Oh, I'll tell you, there are so many of you right now. You said, well, now, what can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. You can tell about what Jesus done for you. Amen. Most Baptists, when they go on visitation, they tiptoe up to the door, and they kind of peck on it, grinning at the companion down the step. They kind of peck on it and breathe a silent prayer. I hope there ain't nobody here. Huh? Get your head up. I'll let you know when we're going to pray. We got plenty of time to pray. You look at me, Jay Bird, while I'm preaching to you. I'm like a spiritual knot on your head. You'll have to climb a ladder to scratch in a minute. Amen. You look at me. And then my friend will pray, Lord, I hope they're not here. I hope they're not here. And they'll knock again and say they wasn't here. We'll come back next week. Amen. It's amazing how folks can talk about everything in the world, but never tell of what Jesus done to them. Amen. And for them. And they will forget a dear man we had in our church one time. He couldn't talk plain. I'm not making fun. I'm really not. I'm not. I'm not so God knows. God's very record. I'm not making fun. But every Wednesday night, he gave his testimony. Every Wednesday night. And he never failed. Ever, same thing every time. Never did change out. Never did change. But I couldn't hardly wait for Wednesday night to come. He, I know he'd give it, and I couldn't hardly wait for it. Every Wednesday night, I said, now let's have a little word of testimony. I was just dying. I knew he'd hit the floor. Amen. He'd get up. He couldn't talk plain. He said, Brother Brew, I don't give my testimony. I said, help yourself, brother. He said, you know, one time I was drunk. Me wasn't no good tall. Me tarry the devil. To me, do me, 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 tag her home drunk. Me need tag her home. And brother Bruce said, me need tag her in. And said, no, brother Bruce said, I'd tag her in the door. So we have big old Tom Pet. That old Tom Dad take a look at me and say, boy, it make a dime for that cat hole. And don't you clod hopper sit there and look at me like you don't know what a cat hole is. Amen. <laughs> now, I may listen. I want to tell you, you may have moved to town, but I guess a country, I could say hard every one of you look to the left. <laughs> Amen. No, 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 don't pull your airs on me, honey. Amen. Why, well, some of you girls used to buy coffee and get that little piece of metal out of the top of the poke so you can roll your hair with it. Amen. Some of why well, you slept on a bed sheet of me a time made out of a fertilizer sack. Oh, John said, that, 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 that cat just make a die for that cat hole. He'd begin to cry and reach and get that old big old handkerchief, you know, a blue pokey dunk on him. He <laughs> said, Brother Brew, I got day. Now I went down to church and I got day. <laughs> oh, he just began to cry and bawl. I just squalled. I couldn't help it. I'd heard that testimony in the hotel how many times. He said, I got day. I got day. Did I tell him home that night and said, I walked in the house. There little old Tom. <laughs> so now I just said, Dad, God damn me. So I felt something rubbing up in my leg, and I looked down at old Tom. <laughs> he said, Brother Brew, old Tom, no, I got saved. <laughs> he said, old Tom, no, I got saved. <laughs> Everywhere he went, he told that. He never did quit telling that. Amen. He told it everywhere. 
Oh, you said, how many verses of Scripture? You? He just told how Jesus saved him. He just told the Lord, done went and saved him. And some of you, my friend, some of you right now, right now, how long has it been since you told what Jesus Christ really done for you that glorious day when you got born into the family of God? How many of you remember that day? Amen. Let me see you raise your hand. Take them down. How long has it been since you told somebody about it? Just tell it. Just tell it. Remember that story over the book of Kings, you know, where uh, somebody preached the other night about how God fought the battles for the children of God. And you know, God takes hornets and just, just beats the devil's eyeballs out. Amen. You know, God fought for some people one time. They thought they heard chariot wheels and they run off and left everything they had. And they left all those provisions there and those poor old lepers came and found it. And they stuck, took that uh, stuff, vittles and provisions out and started burying, burying it in the ground. And after a while, one of them said in chapter 7 and verse 9, he said, We do not well. This is a day of good tidings. And we hope. Peace. You know why the world's going to hell? There are so many people today that said they're saved. That's afraid to tell it about Jesus Christ. Some of you knotheads think that's the preacher's job. Come on up here, I'll box your jaws. You hungry cuss. We hinder when we don't tell it. I believe we ought to tell it. Amen. Tell it in the morning. Sow it in the sun. All waters. Hallelujah. Don't stop. Just tell it. Tell it wherever you go. Tell it. We stand up and have the nerve to sing that old song. I love to tell the story of Jesus and his love. And then the first chance we get, well, I don't feel led. Honey, you don't have to feel led, stupid. I heard one of my former pastors, Dr. Bob Gray, say this one. I'm like the rest of me today. Like the rest of me today. Oh, Brother Bob said, you know, a lot of Baptists will grab that verse out of the Bible and said, the Bible said, and their chin will quiver and a tear will run down their cheek. And he said, Lo, I am with you. And he says that. But there's some more to that. He had said, Go and lo. No go, no lo. Huh? No go. It's just that simple, isn't it? He said, go and lo. That's what Brother Reno's talking about. That's what makes a man that, uh, that's, I, I know this, he never told you. I know, got a bad heart. Got a bad heart. Needs oxygen every once in a while. Falls sometime in the pulpit. Passes out. Just been given a little while to live. Somebody said, why don't that old sick preacher just sit down somewhere? I'll tell you why. It's shut up in his bones and he can't. He can't. What makes old Joe Parson? What makes that old man? Why is it that'll stir him to tears? And what is it that'll put him out here somewhere on the road? And I'm sure that he don't get the right diet that he needs. I'm sure of that. What is it? He's got his shut up in his bones. Amen. And some of you jaybirds sat around and said, I'll leave that up to them to do. I'd like to tell me a baseball bat. Are you mad? Still 7.30. We handle it when we don't tell it. Amen. I believe we ought to tell it. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I ain't got nobody's tell. Now, that's the height of stupidity. That's just downright stupid, isn't it? That's plain old unadulterated ignorance. Amen. 
So somebody said, who can I tell them a job? Let me tell you a little story. One time, one time, years ago, standing by the side of a railroad track one day, a little old boy, the son of a man that drank, dealt in moonshine, standing by the side of an old railroad track, swinging on an old fence about down, just swinging back and forth like this. So, a train came by, a freight train, stopped to pick up some, uh, uh, some uh, cars on a siding, and the caboose came right even of that little old boy. Coming out of that caboose was an old fellow with gray hair, gray as white as the snow. He walked out of the caboose, walked down through the briars, walked down through the briars, and walked over the little boy. He said, hey boy, why ain't you in school? The little old boy said, I ain't got no clothes. I just ain't got no clothes. I just ain't got nothing. He said, boy, and I looked up at him. Strangest thing, he's standing there crying. I there in them weeds. Brars, crying. The old boy looked up. He said, uh, boy, are you saved? No, ain't saved. And that old man stood there in the briars, the conductor of a freight train, telling a little old boy about Jesus. About Jesus. Now he said, son, I'll tell you what. I go to Atlanta today and lay over eight hours. Go back up and lay over in Edelwall, Tennessee, eight hours. He said, my name's C.H. Brown. He never taught no Sunday school classes. He never led no great choirs. But he was born again and he was out telling about Jesus. Amen. His congregation wasn't in plush auditorium, but kids standing in the weeds by the side of the railroad track dreaming about being an engineer someday. And he said, son, when I come back down this railroad track, if you'll be out here, I'll have something for you. I'll have something for you. That boy waited for days. And eventually that train came back south, that old coal burner. Remember those old coal burners? That old whistle sounded lonesome and mournful. And that engineer had heard about it. He blew that whistle with that scarf around his neck and that pulled down the railroad hat and pointed back toward the end of the caboose. <sighs> that little old boy's heart. Look back up, lean out across that fence. Look way up the railroad. No caboose. But after a while, that caboose came inside. And that old man swinging on the side of that caboose with that white hair blowing in the wind. And a great big package in his hand. And he came where he was. Amen. Amen. And that package come running, rolling through the weeds. And that little old boy jerked it up, ran to the house hollering, Mama! 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 <sighs> Throwed it down the front in the living room floor. We called it the setting room back then, you remember? Setting room. Ripped that package open, had a little blue shirt, still had the tag on, never had been worn. I'm honest. I thought everybody wore hand me down clothes. But I'm honest, I thought they did. We all did. Had a new pair of overalls on in it. I mean, still had the tag on it. Back here, sewed on, you know, not glued then, sewed on. Hmm? That's right. And now, if you think that's it, you wait till you hear this had a little pair of real boots. And I didn't know they made them. I just thought they put them pictures in the Sears Roebuck catalog. I didn't know they really made them. But it had a little pair of boots, and listen to this, had a place to put a knife in the side. Now, if you think that fellow was cheap, it had a knife in there. But that ain't all. There was a little black book. And on the front of it, it said New Testament. And there was a marker that he fixed so I dare not miss. 
and a circle around a verse. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Now somebody said it didn't amount to nothing. Well, I want to look you in your God-given eyeballs. I may not have amounted to as much as some of these fellas, but I was that boy standing in the weeds. I am out and looked upon as an outcast of society. But November the 23rd, 1943, at 20 minutes after 12, Camp Walters, Texas, A Company, second platoon on the left upstairs, second monk on the left on the top bunk, God called me to preach. Hallelujah to God to my soul. Yes, because one man told it. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day when we stand before God. And the Lord said, Ed Blue. Oh! And then he said, C.H. Brown. That old man that loved God comes and bows by my side. And he said, Brown, you never got to go much up except up and down that old railroad. But you sewed a package out to a little old boy one day. You wasn't ashamed to tell it, Brown. Now then, ever so that that little old boy won to God, Brown, you got part in it, amen? Just because you told it, hallelujah! God help amen. Hallelujah. Just tell it. Some of you better start telling it. Oh, it's sweet to tell it. Oh, yes, it's sweet to tell it. Brother Joe, you've been in this a lot longer than I. But oh, it's getting sweeter all the time, isn't it? You've heard it, I'm sure, the story of the fellow that said, it's just getting tweeter and tweeter. And one day it'll turn to Tugger. Amen. Amen. Just tell it. Just tell it. You said I can't tell it eloquently. Oh, this is a story. You don't have to polish it up. No, amen. You said I don't have enough education to tell it. Shut your mouth. What I'm telling you is shut up. Oh, listen, I can tell it. I'm like Brother Reno, honest. I come in the house smothering to death one day under a bed because we had company coming. I couldn't face them. I crawled under the bed. I like to smother to death. Honest. I couldn't face them. If you'd have tried to talk to me and if you'd have finally caught me, I'd have sit around. If it had been a gravel on the ground, I'd have rolled it a mile to keep them looking you know. I couldn't do it. I'm honest, I couldn't do it. You know what? Now, you won't admit this, but I will. Uh, you know, I, somebody said, why? I was self-conscious of my smiling equipment. <laughs> As you can observe, I have a bountiful, a bountiful supply of smiling equipment. If I didn't have a little more mouth than some of you, I'm honest, I don't see how you survive. <laughs> I don't see how you make it. But you know, I caught myself as a boy going around trying to pucker up. I was in a kissing spell all the time. I'm honest. I was puckered for kissing before a lot of folks knew anything about it. But it was, I was, I went around like this with my hand over my mouth for years. Hmm? Well, somebody said, what's the matter? Why can't I tell it? Some of you are just like I was. You're ashamed to tell it. Yeah. Hey, Amen. You better get busy. You're behind now. Hey, Amen. You're behind. You're behind. Oh, I mean, you're behind bad, too. You hinder the gospel when you don't tell it. Secondly, you hinder the gospel when you don't live it. Amen. 
See, we're not just uh, supposed to go around the Schofield Bible stuck under our arm and say we're a Christian. But that book's our instruction. That book tells us what to do and what not to do. Amen. Come on now, look up at me, look up at me, look at me. We're hindered when we don't live. Somebody said, what do you mean? I believe, now some of you folks may think this is old-fashioned, but you may be amazed, but I believe in separation. Amen. Isn't that a strange thing, 1973, to believe in separation? But I do. I do. I've been called a fanatic. I was a certain place preaching some time ago, and I made a remark about these matador britches. That's them britches that's so tight. I'm honest. I don't see how they ever get in them. Women I'm talking about. They're so tight. They could put a quarter in their hip pocket. And you could tell what it's heads or tails. And if you don't think that's something, brother, wait till you see one of these 90 pound, uh, 190 pound pigs coming down the street trying to stretch that 25 pound flour sack over all that. Amen. Hear me, friend of mine. It may strike you odd. I believe today things such as this that I'm talking about today, the immodest dress and uh, this uh, age of uh, permissiveness that we're living in today that many so-called Christians are getting into is hindering a million soul from coming to know God. Somebody said it the other night and I thought how true it is. I know of an example, I've told this many times, of an old boy that lived in a field where I tried to pastor one time. I went there and preached to him while I don't think I ever did pastor that cussed outfit. But anyway, I went there and preached to him. I was out there and I went to this man's store. I said, won't you come to the service Sunday? He said, I ain't coming. Now, I mean, you can get the point right there fast. You'll be amazed how you can find him saying that. Amen. He said, I ain't coming. <laughs> well, what do you say after that? <laughs> All I can think of, you think it's, you think it's going to rain? <laughs> well, this dry weather's bad on the rhubarb or something like that, you know. Well, I said, uh, why? He said, I, 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 I'll show you. He led me in a little place, I guess he'd call it his office, a little alcove, a little shelf nailed up on the wall. He said, uh, what do you see? I said, I see three cheese boxes. You know what I'm talking about, the wooden boxes like you used to sit cheese in. And stuck down in those boxes was charge account books. And up on the tops of those books was the name of the, uh, uh, of the customer, charge account. Two boxes was filled and they was running over to the end like that, like that. One of them had three books in it. He said, now those three books belong to the biggest bootleggers in our county. He said, you can set your watch by them this coming Friday. He said, they'll be in here to pay their bill. He said, you can stand here and wait. They'll be in here to pay it. They've never missed the time. They have never have. They don't owe me a cent. They don't pay me. But he said, you can, you can stand out there and set your watch by them. He said, they'll be here. But he said, you recognize any of those names on those other two books? Did you ever say anything you wish you'd have cut your tongue out before you'd have said it? I took foot and mouth disease all of a sudden. I opened my mouth and stuck my foot in it. I said, why, sure, that's so my... Oh, that, yes, they teach Sunday, Sunday school. And then I saw what I'd done. Oh. And I said, yeah, they sing in the choir. And I tried to get out of it as best I could. He said, yeah, and that's why I ain't coming to Sunday school, too. And I looked up at him, and it, this ear was purple. And his jaw was set. Now, I may be a dumb in a lot of areas, but when a man gets that way, Billy, he is dangerous. And this left eye was twitching. And I noticed a drop of foam coming out of that corner of his mouth. Oh. 
what do you say? And I noticed him kind of raise up one foot about six inches off the floor and stump it. That man was mad, boy. And he said that crowd's come in here and carried my groceries off. They burnt my gas up out of that little pump out there. Now they won't even come back by my store. They go back that back road back yonder, and when they do have to come by, they put their hand up in the window to keep me from seeing who it really is. I saw you shiver, sir. That man's still lost. He's still lost. He don't go to church yet. You can't get him in church. Those old charge account books are still there every morning. He won't throw them away. He hasn't got rid of them. Now somebody said, those are good people. Shut your mouth. They're hindering the gospel. And that lousy bunch of hell cats think that the thing that's wrong is they have to change pastors every six months. It's not changing pastors that bunch of these. It's a change of heart they need. And I got out of there. It may be an old grocery bill laying around somewhere you haven't paid. It may be an old gas bill or a garage bill. Or maybe you've moved off and lost J.C. Penny. something hot shot. And I'm so bold and brave right now, I think I can take everybody on in this throw right here with one hand behind me. And I may start with you four or five fellas to warm up there, amen? When I think about men that sweat their life away and try to live for God and try to get the gospel out and try to win souls and a bunch of dead beasts and swindlers, my friend, they can jump ten benches and shout from here to yonder. But my friend, it's not your loud shouting. It's not your high jumping. It's dedicated, consecrated living that'll win the world to God. Amen. I saw some high jumpers you couldn't trust nowhere. I saw some folks that are the holler with that little ring to it, that brokenness of voice, with a tear rolling down their cheeks. But I got news for you. You couldn't trust some of them fellas. Amen. Somebody said, you're killing my spirit. It was crippled anyhow. Might as well go ahead and shoot it. Amen. Might as well go ahead and shoot it. There wasn't no count, no how. Hey, man, you ought to send the thing back a long time ago. <sighs> Somebody said, well, preacher, you don't you usually preach with your coat on? Yeah, but I got another hour and a half, so I just thought I'd pull it off. Hey, Amen. <laughs> just 7.30 in the house. And you preachers that's wanting my watch, you can't have it. Hey, <laughs> Amen. We hinder it when we don't live it. I told this story multitudes of times. I was pastoring a little church one time. If I called the name Sam, you know where it's at. I know your wife would too. <laughs> well now, smart Alec, you're ahead of me, eh, man? You hear him laugh like that. Well, anyhow. I never will forget it. I'd preached. I'd like somebody said last night I preached everything I know and wasn't too sure of some things I had preached, eh, man? <laughs> But anyway, I, I, listen, I was about to run out of soap. I preached, I'm honest, I preached. Oh, God. Did anybody ever tell you, say, hey, I got one of your first tapes. Do you want to hear it? I said, no. Oh, no, Lord God, no. Run with it. Amen. Whew. 
Well, I'd preach, oh, God, I'd preach, I'm honest, I'd preach squall, squall, ball, slung, snot, nasal drip. I mean, I'd done, I'd done everything. I'd got down rolling the floor. I think I'd pull my hair a few times. I'd done everything. I'm honest. And there wasn't nothing happening but me rolling. Amen. Deader than 40 ton of hell. I ain't never seen nothing that dead. And one day, we had them Saturday meetings back in. Remember that first Saturday service? That's when you had the conference. <laughs> Lord God, deliver me from conferences. God help a man that's still having conferences. You can stir up more hell in one conference and you can get straightened out in ten years. Amen. Amen. You can tell I pastor twenty years, can't you? Amen. Of course, I know I look real young, but oh, I'm going to. Amen. Amen. But anyway, there wasn't nothing happening. And one day I was preaching, I just about threw. I'd preached about 15 minutes, my tongue was swelled in my mouth, you know. And my, oh, Lord, I was in a mess. I was in an awful mess. And all of a sudden, one old lady stood up. You, you ever, you, do, you, do you know what Mother's Coco is? You ever see that box, you know, with that picture of Mother, that bonnet on it, you know? And, oh, you, oh, hey, man, you have other things. They have two, if I just admit it. But anyway, this old lady stood up, looked like that picture of on Mother's Coco, you know. Little rosy cheeks, you know. A little lump right there in that left jaw. And it wasn't Coco either, eh? <laughs> Slightly resembled it, but it wasn't Coco, eh? <laughs> Amen. You know, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Huh? <laughs> This old lady got up and said, uh, had one of them little handkerchiefs out, you know. Twisting on it. One of them little kind was made more for show than it was for blow, you know. She said, Brother Bloom. See, I just can't stand it no longer. See, I got, I got, I got to fess up. Well, I said, come on out here. He said, no, I just won't come out here. I said, you ain't going to do no such thing. You're coming out down here. God give me boldness right then like I don't think I've ever had since. Amen. I ain't never slapped an old mother's cocoa mama woman like that. I believe I'd have swapped her. Amen. I believe I'd have walked her. Amen. He said, no, it's all right. You, I just stand. I said, you ain't going to stand right there. Neither. I said, get out of there. And she come out there, you know, that long dress on, you know. Stood down there, twist, still twisting on that handshake. Well, I said, what you got to say? She said, I just can't bring myself to say it. <laughs> and about that time, another old heifer, a lady is standing back over there. <laughs> and she got up, looked just like her twin sister, only her lump was another thigh. And she said, i got a word to say to you, Brother Ray. Well, I said, come on down here. She said, I, I just can't make it. I said, yes, you can. <laughs> she said, I'll just say it right here. I said, you ain't going to say it right there. You're coming right down. Yeah! And she jumped out of that seat, and here she come. Now they stood, you know, twisting on them hatched. I said, all right, which one's first? She said, let her go ahead. And she said, I know it hurt. And she said, I know it hurt. <laughs> you know, I stood there for a while and she said, and I said, ladies, what in the name of God's wrong? Now, I want to tell you something. This ain't funny. I know that. But you'll smile at this, but oh, how tragic it is. Here stood two old women standing on the edge of the grave, would be dead before too long. Here was a young preacher that didn't know much. God had called him, saved and called him, put him there in that little old church. Didn't a whole lot. There I was laboring, trying to do God's work. 
Here's two old women that ought to have been my helper and my prayer partners. They ought to have labored with me. They ought to encourage me. But here they stood there with their handkerchiefs in their hand, their lump in their jaw. And one of them said, let her tell it. I said, no, one of you tell it. Now here's the story, and you laugh if you will, but it's not a bit funny. She said, I went up in the woods five years ago. This is a story. Five years ago. And I got me some rich dirt. And I got it in buckets. And I carried it down to my house. And I made me a flower bed. And I planted me some flowers in it. Now, I know this, this may amuse you, but when you think about it, it's not funny. And she said, her old chickens come over in my yard and scratch my flowers up. And said, I haven't spoke to her in five years. I wonder, while they was killing the church and not living like Christians ought to live, I wonder how many souls went to hell. I wonder why you're sitting there dead and cold and won't pray for your pastor and doing everything in your ungodly life to break the church and to kill the preacher and persecute the pastor's wife and bring down hell on the church. I wonder, God bless your cussed heart, have you ever stopped to think how many souls are going to hell? Paul said, at least I should hinder the gospel. You better stop, my friend. That bunch is going around today in every church they get in, they said, well, I'll tell you right now. That preacher's been here long enough, and I'm going to start right now a campaign to run him off. Brother, let me tell you, 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 you bring confusion in that church and hinder the gospel of Christ and every soul that goes to hell, my friend, you'll stand on the judgment seat of Christ if you've ever been saved, and God Almighty will judge you for that. Amen? We enter the gospel of Christ when we don't live it. Then we enter the gospel of Christ when we don't give to it. I'm glad you saved your shouting for now. I can just see some of you bubbling over anyhow. You're just dying to shout. You've got to shout just resting down that left rib and oh, you just can't hardly wait. But if you get up and leave now, they'll know what Richard do, won't they? So you won't move, so I'm going to let you have it both barrels. Somebody said, what a way to end a camp. If I can get some of you stubborn, arrogant, lazy, ornery, cusses, old long-tongued heifers to go out of here telling about the love of Jesus, then glory to God, something's been accomplished. Amen? We hinder the gospel when we don't give to it. My dear friend, listen. The favorite Baptist hymn nowadays is, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Amen. And they mean it. Amen. Some of you wouldn't give a dime to see a black snake ride a bicycle sideways with a bale of hay on his shoulder wearing sunshades. Amen. And that's worth a quarter of anybody's money. Amen. Some of you hounds, God bless your heart, would rob God at the bat of an eye. I went into a church one time for a revival meeting. They called me down there for revival and I went. I got there and that night I had a man that was on the police force about the size of Bobby Grubbs. And brother, that is big. He's gone, isn't he? Whew. That man's on the police force. He went with me. We drove up in the yard. And I'm honest, poor God, folks, I ain't never heard that kind of shouting in my life. They was literally tearing the building down. Honest. You could put your hand up on the wall. It was vibrating. The windows were rattling. I ain't never heard nothing like that. And we ventured into the door. And they're throwing songbooks, coat. I, I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. And he and I worked our way down to the front. 
And you know, we got down, and I sat down by the side of the preacher. I sat down by the side of him, and there he sat. He wasn't shouting, wasn't doing nothing. There he sat. And I said, boy, they're having a time. He said, man, they sure are. And I looked over at his wife sitting on another pew, and her eyes were sunk back in her head, the old kid sitting there with her. And I've known her for years. I said, boy, what in the world's the matter with your wife? He said, she's all right. No, I said, she ain't all right. I said, what's the matter with your wife? Well, I said, she, she's all right. I said, now you listen to me, boy. What's the matter with your wife? He broke down and started crying. said, she's hungry. She's hungry. Whew. Now, let me tell you something. My brother sitting back there, and if you look at both of us, you can probably tell. Don't, 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 don't you brag about your folks coming across on the Mayflower. Well, God bless your heart, our kin folks was here on the bank waiting for them when they got here. <laughs> and if we hadn't showed you a little bit of mercy and learned you how to plant corn, you were so dumb you'd have starved it that first winter. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He said, they're hungry. And I want to tell you something right now, brother. I mean, now you, some of you preachers dress it up and call your righteous indignation. <laughs> but I don't tell you what's wrong with me. I was as mad as the devil. Now, that's what's wrong with me. I'm honest with you. I was so mad. Ooh. My chin got to quiver and I tried to stop it. I caught myself saying, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, man, when your chin starts that way and you can't hold it with both hands, you are mad, boy. And I said, what do you mean, hungry? He said, they've gotten mad at me for preaching the gospel, and they won't pay me my payday. He said, we haven't eaten anything in two or three days. we fed it to our children. She and I have done without. I jumped up. I said to that policeman, I said, get back yonder at that door. And I, you've had it if you let one of them out. I mean, you've had it. He run, I'm honest, I don't think he'd ever scared of anything in his life. But the way I looked at him, he got as pale as death. He run for that door, stretched his hands out and said, like this preacher. I said, that's it. And there's still a shout. Oh, there's running wild, jumping bank, and screaming. And I got up and I said, Shut up! Shut up! And some of them liked to faint and just fell down their seats. One old fellow was so far back to the back, he shouted his way to the seat and said, Hey! <laughs> And I said, give me some men up here to take an offering. And they jumped up, scared to death. I said, you know how to take an offering? And one of them, kind of a little mousy voice, said, yes, all we do is pass the place. I said, you ain't got good sense. <laughs> well, he said, I don't know how to do it, do you? I said, you ever read the story of Lot? Oh, yes, we have that in Sunday school. But I said, did you ever read down there when they're trying to get him out? The Bible said he lingered. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I said, when you get under their nose with that offering plate, linger, boy, linger. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Brother Joe. I believe you will beat the devil out of that unrecussed crowd. Amen. Got that old man in the fighting mood. <laughs> Woo! That bunch of hell cats up a shouting. Give me a baseball bat with a plow point stuck through it, and Joe and I'll have a time. Yeah. 
They sat down, you know, and I followed that feller taking up the offering. He come up to that feller that went, Whoo! He went down, he stuck that plate under his nose and started to move it. I said, hold it! Hold it! And that old man looked up at me and put on a sheepish grin, you know. And he reached back in his hip pocket after one of them old, old sock leg uh, pocket books, you know, that folds up with a snap on the top of it, you know, amen. He fumbled around down in there and got a, I, I believe it's a 10. Yeah, that's what it was. A $10 bill, unrolled it, just full of money. He said, to bring me back $9 and a half. I got up in his old face and I said, you ain't a getting a penny back. <laughs> Not a cent. Not a cent. And I said, I saw another tin in there. And if I don't get satisfied this time, I'm a coming back after that. <laughs> And he said, I was just joking, I don't want to say lying old cuss. <laughs> lying old cuss. He wanted nine dollars and fifty cents back. But I want to go on record to say he never got it and I got that other ten too. Amen. I went back after it. I was going to get it. Brought that offering up there and it's, oh, I think few dollars in it. I don't know if any of you ever knew knew him or not. Did any of you ever know P.E. Kirkendall? Do you know him, Joe? I never will forget what P.E. said one time. He said, I spiritually cussed that outfit out. Amen. I don't know how you spiritually cuss. But I lit on them. I lit it on them. I, oh, I'm honest. I like they got sorry for them. But I didn't. No, I didn't. My strength didn't fail me. <laughs> Woo! I said, let's go again. And we went again. And again. And again. And again. And I'd still be there taking up an offering if I hadn't got enough to buy that man some growth. Now, let me tell you, churches, and you put this down, and I'm going to get to the missionary aspect in a minute, and Willie, really you'll enjoy this part of it. But I want to tell you something. If you've got a man that's preaching the Word of God, like it is to men like they are, and it's laying it down out of the old King James Version of the Bible, and look you in your God-given eyeballs, and tell it just like it is, Brother, you take care of that man. When you said, I send my tithe, well, how in the world did it ever get to be yours, honey? The Bible said the tithe is the Lord's. And it tells you when to bring it and where to bring it. Amen? Then you said, I send mine to AA and the Oral and the... 111 Pasadena, California. <laughs> send it to Oral, my foot. The Methodists ought to kick them out three or four years ago, amen? That's a truth, Bill, amen? You said, I tell him, go ahead and tell him, go ahead and tell him. Some of you jaybirds, you said, Lord, eat one of his lungs up with cancer and give him a limp in his left leg and let his hair start coming out. You keep him humble, Lord, we'll keep him poor. <laughs> Lord God, some of you rascals, you said, I ain't never been called a rascal. Rascal! 
rascal, 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 rascal. Now you have a man. If I lift anybody out, I'll get you after a while. Some of you rascals. You said, well, he ain't no man to reckon I am. I will look you in your face and tell you right now. I've sweat per perspired and more tonight than some of you rascals will in a whole year on the job you work. I'll be tired tonight when I get through. And if you think I'm halfway through, honey, you better think again. It's still 7.30. I'm just on the second page of my outline and there's two more to go. <laughs> 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 Come here, boy. See them? Miss Blue, stand up, honey. Stand up. I could tell you, I'm still boss for her. See that woman right back there? Take them keys to her son. Honey, you better take them keys. You may have to leave fast. This crowd's looking bad. <laughs> Tina, where you at? All right, honey. When you see Mama start, I'll be right behind her. Amen. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Let me tell you something right now. And you put this down in your spiritual pipe and smoke it. I believe God's man ought to be taken care of. I believe his house ought to be taken care of. And he wears old cars out taking care of you and running to the hospitals and taking care of you. God bless your heart. You're a pay for it. Hallelujah. Amen. What's wrong with you preachers? Can't you say amen? Tires on it. See about it. Buy a new suit. Somebody said, ah, he's got to get up here in front of the public uh, and face an ungodly dying world. Uh, you ought to make him look good uh, and show that you're not a bunch of cheap skating God robbers. Amen. <laughs> Is this what getting back there too? Can you hear me back there? <sighs> huh? What'd you say, Stinny? Hallelujah. That's old Stinny Blue. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was looking around for that other blue that's sitting over there a while ago. Where'd he go? <laughs> Dr. Pepsi, Pepsi and Narcy. Oh, Lord God. You ever hear of a shirt sleeve revival? I preached a meeting. <laughs> I preached a meeting. Not 25. Well, let's see. Wait, let me get straight. Down that curve, up that hill, down the hover. Oh, yeah. Draw your line. I preached a meeting in a church not 30 miles from here. The pastor had me in the study, Samuel. And he said, uh, this has been our most... I stayed up here with you. <laughs> he left me, Sam. I mean, he left me. That's the first time he's ever done it. I mean, I'll talk to you after church, young man. 
You stay here. Through. If you leave, you've had it. I preached a meeting in this church, and the pastor said, This has been our most prosperous year. He said, We have really prospered. He said, Our offering averages uh, about a thousand dollars a week. Man, you could tell that boy was educated. <laughs> said, we are having the best attendance we have ever had. Man, you talk about in a big church, boy, I was there. said, we have $10,000 in savings. Now, you, you forgive me about this. I mean, <laughs> boy, I wish I didn't have to say this. <laughs> Something, I don't know what spirit it was and who it was, but something hollered in my ear and said, Man, you'll get a good offering in this meeting. You want me to tell you what my offering was? Two dollars and a quarter. Now you go ahead and laugh. But wait till you have to start paying them three and four hundred dollar a month gas bills. You wait. You don't do it, God will meet you one day at the judgment seat of Christ. There's a church in Cleveland, Tennessee, that the chairman of the Board of Deacons told me out of his own mouth. He said, we've got 20,000 in one bank, 20,000 in another, and 20,000 in another. He said, we've done that because we can't get enough insurance on all of it in one bank, so we moved it. I said, how many missionaries you got? He said, none. There's some of you birds sitting in old churches today that's as dead as hell, putting God's tithes down a spiritual rat hole and shipping it off to Nashville or somewhere else and don't know where it's going. And men of God that's trying to get to the field to preach an old-fashioned fundamental sound gospel to a dying world. Is that right, Ray? Are you standing with me, preacher? Amen. I just want to see how much backbone the rest of you preachers got. How many of you other preachers are with me right now? Let me see you stand up. Amen. Bill, I know missionaries that literally are on the field today, literally almost starving to death to get the word out. I saw one of your boys come back from Australia when I saw him leave. Old Sid Hunter and his wife. All. They stayed on the field for years. One of them had a death in the family. I went to the airport to meet them when they came in. And I saw I walked down that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. I said to my wife, Look at her. Her cheeks were sunk in, her face was poor. 
The bunch of churches here more concerned about DuPont 501 and plastic babsters and prefabricated steeples than they are getting the Word of God out. And some of you skin flints, God bless your cussed heart. You'll run around and said, I can't afford to give. But every soul that drops off into hell, you'll meet God about it. At the judgment seat of Christ. And there's some of you here this week that's gobbled up the blessings of God Almighty. Men have pleaded with you and begged with you to help us help over the Sammy keep this a going for God. You've teased God. You've tried to appease God. The man said nine dollars. If he'd have said fifty cents, some of you wouldn't have raised your hand. Trambo, come here. I want to hug your neck. I love you, Sam. Yeah, I know you do. Hey, man, I know that. Hey, man. I love you, Sam. Yeah, I believe that with all my heart. Yes. God's going to give you somebody to help you show this one. Yes, I believe that. Yeah, I believe that. We're going to believe God that was Yes, sir. Boy, God's going to wake somebody back out in that crowd. Maybe tonight. So you got some money I want you to say. Amen, boy. Amen. Amen. Little old bitty boy around here that's trying to do something for God. And you can drive out of here off of these grounds. You slept in good beds. And he's had his wife down there fixing food. And you slept in good beds. And you've been treated nice. He just stand up to the old nervous hand and said, We're glad to have you. We appreciate you coming. We're so glad you come. You thieving rascal. You soak the blessings of God down. You will drive away and said, Well, I just didn't see how I could. When somebody tells you your children may not have one of these to go to in a few years, you said, I'd rather they're dead. But you won't lift your finger to keep something like this going. You let him walk under the load. You let him labor on it, and said, "Isn't old Sammy humble? Isn't he humble? You notice how he cries? Isn't he humble? How dare you? How dare you?" Bless you, Frank. How dare you? You'll drive back and say, boy, we had a time. We had a time. But how many nights will you stay awake? How many pillars will you wet with tears? How many of you are worried whether we got some more ground for a parking lot or not? So what did that boy do? He brought some money. I believe with all my heart he probably brought the last dime he had. I know him. He used to be his pastor. But there's some of you wrestling with it right now. You said car payment, house payment. I got news for you. God can take house, car, and all away from you. Amen. I believe there's somebody else ought to hit that old trail right down through there right now. Now comes another one of my ex-members. I'm proud of him now, Reno. I'm proud of him now, Joe. We hear the gospel when we won't give to it. We hear it, we hear it, we hear it. Yeah, he'll go home barefooted. I know him. He'd walk to Florida barefooted. The gospel wouldn't be hindered. The God 
God Almighty will be glorified. But he said, what about his shoes? Believe with all my heart, God will speak to somebody's heart in a minute. Say, go pay for that boy's shoes. When you're in the gospel, we walk guiltily. You've soaked up God's almighty's blessings. Amen. I want my wife, honey, come and pray for me right now, would you? The devil's framing up on me. Joe, the devil's trying to pray. Joe, get over and pray for me. Pray for me. You said we don't want America to go down in dry rock. Yeah, but some of you will see a camp like this a sufferer and carry walls before you will sacrificially lay her down in the bucket. Amen. You ain't going to rest. Some of you sitting right now, as miserable as you can be, amen, you could write a check, amen. Hallelujah, I'm going to let you suffer a while. I'm going to stand and look in your God-given eyeballs. Hallelujah. You should aim but a few moving. There'll be some of you that'll be suffering. God may draw the line on you on the way home. God may call for a total, amen, lady. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Glory to God in the Lamb. You said, I've been saving money for something. You better mind God tonight. And just listen to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just do what God's telling you. I can't stop preaching right now. You just have to act on it right now. Whatever God tells you to do, you better do it right now. Amen. You better get up right now. You better move right now. Oh, you said, Brother Blue, how in the world are we hindering the gospel? I'll tell you right now, there's little boys and girls right here. This is the closest to the power of God they're going to get, maybe. And some of you, when I've got on this, you dried up on me. You was laughing a while ago. You was waving your hands a while ago. But I'll tell you right now, some of you dried up on me. Amen. Let's see if them amens are real now. Let's see if you really meant business now. There comes your daughter, Bobby. You can be proud of her, boy. Praise God. There comes a missionary. A missionary. I know Bill Cosby. He can't afford that, but he can't afford not to. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you better get ready for God's chopping axe. He's going to work you over if you don't mind God this very minute. God's fool you this week. You sit there, you skin flint. You sit there and squeeze God, what God's told you to do. Me and I pleaded with you and bag with you. God's dealt with your heart. And you said, I ain't going to do it. Honey, keep on a praying. God's moving on some hearts now. Amen. Brother, you hear me? You let this camp suffer. And God Almighty will call you into judgment about it one day. I'm going to sit down and rest a few minutes, Brother Turner. Amen. And that's the rest of me. Amen. That's my business and God's ain't it. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Here comes my little old girl. Maybe you need to write an IOU. Bless you, honey. Come on up here. Your old sweaty daddy's proud of you. I may not have learned you a lot of things, but I learned you to give. Hallelujah. Glory to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. Amen. What you want to do, honey? Thank you. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah to God. Honey, put your piece of paper and say, I owe you whatever you want to write on it. 
she had been saving for a saddle for a horse. The man gave her a saddle, and that means she had her money left. And she said tonight, Daddy, I want to give some of my saddle money. Hallelujah! Keep on a praying, honey. Glory to God, you and old Joe and these preachers are bringing them down the aisle now. Amen. Amen. I want me an organist over here. Come on.